Good morning or afternoon or early evening for you all. Hello. All right. Hey, Vinod, how are you doing? Here is. I just got vaccinated. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did you? Congrats, I guess. <laughs> Uh, I guess awesome. uh, it's AstraZeneca. No one knows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, I have another. I am not even able to get it for next. So it's still gated here. <laughs> okay. By the way, nice hat. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This is my, this is my, it's Friday hat. I'm wearing blue. Oh, go ahead and share my screen probably here in a second. Take off my, hey, Marina. Hi. All right, we'll probably be pretty quick today since it's likely smaller crowd due to the holiday. All right. Yeah, let's go ahead and dive into this. Um, so at this point with the paper, uh, I was chatting with John a little bit about this yesterday. Um, we are ultimately ready to just start tackling and, and getting through the media elements. There are far fewer comments than there were even a week ago. I mean, we're, we're down to the point where, you know, there's not even simple recommendations. Now it's kind of bigger uh, question items. So, um, I, if, if it's good with you all, let's try to shorten this. Uh, I would say to 30 minutes, uh, today, let's address some of the, the more meteor, uh, comments that are on here. And then I, I think the, the like leaving thing would be, uh, uh, you know, recommending you all go through and either pick one section just to see if there's anything else you can find, but we've, we've, we're we're really ready at this point for external review. Uh, once we tackle, I think these last kind of uh, these around um, hey, debatable issue. I, I would say, yeah, I have an honor. Sorry, can you? I'm not sure if it is my connection, but uh, it seems like uh, you know I'm getting some problem slow with your broadband. Uh, is it same for others, or it's just for me? Like. Uh, Sometimes your voice is kind of breaking for me, at least for me. Anybody else? Mike? Yeah, I mean, Mike. I was hearing it a little bit, but um, I don't know if it, it, it wasn't nearly, uh, it, like I could still understand you, but I, I don't know if it's, oh. it's worse for some people. I've been having issues recently with, with Zoom where it, 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 like I, I don't see anything on my end, but apparently it is slowing down. So I, uh, uh, Vinod, uh, if, it, if it keeps happening, uh, just let me know, okay? I'll go and jiggle the the plug in the route or the modem or something. I'll figure something out the router. Um, all right. Does that sound like a decent plan for today? Going comment by comment and actually just like trying to get through some of those issues. Anybody? That's a good plan. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so uh, hands down, uh, it, we're actually in, in terms of the. Um, the introduction aspect, uh, things are, are pretty solid uh, until we get to the securing build pipelines uh, uh, section. This is this has been the kind of bane of our existence, and this was the most controversial aspect of when we were reviewing it as the four uh, last week. And so one of the things we're waiting on, and I'll have to reach out to Emily separately and see if, if she has any update for that graphic. Alex, glad to see you joined. Um, I did go ahead and mention before I we delete this, let's wait until there's a graphic there. Um, just so we remember what we're trying to convey. Um, 
because I, I do think this is valuable, but I don't think it's presented in a way that's good. So uh, that that's at least my sentiment there. Um, does anybody, if you if you're familiar with this section of build infrastructure, feel that bulldozing all this text away and replacing it with a graphic that that clearly shows uh, pretty much these elements? Does anybody feel particularly hurt by that decision? No, I actually thought there was a lot, okay, a bit cool. too much text here. So that's that'll be good. This whole section is a bit too much text, which gets to this little piece by you, Alex, adding in another sentence. Uh, uh, I, I, I didn't want to say no to this. There's a lot going on in this, in this paragraph period, a lot of like meaty sentences um, issue. And I, 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 I'm going to be honest. I did not actually look to see how the chat went with, um, around build worker versus build steps. I don't see, and Blake isn't on the call, so we can actually just, we can make decisions for him. Um, always at this time. Um, what is, does anybody feel strongly about this? Alex, there's, you wrote a lot about this. You've basically written an entire paper on build worker versus build step. What do you got to say? I mean, so I was attempting to, so we, we had a, an extended terminology debate um, in the meeting where we were trying to go through this section um, about what they were. And, and I was trying to figure out a way to sort of uh, make sense of it all. And so that's where this suggestion is coming from is, um, and, and I can rehash um, what else I've said about it, but, but basically it seems to me that um, we've sort of collapsed the distinction a little bit in the suggestions we're making, mm -hmm. um, where we are, we are assuming that build steps are being run on containers. And we're also recommending right. that all of those be isolated and have a separation of concern so that each one is running on its own container. And so to me, it seems like we've collapsed that distinction so that the worker and the step are there there is a distinction between them there's a way to distinguish them but they are sort of existing in a one-to-one -one relationship and so they are at least nominally right. interchangeable to a certain extent i don't know if that's helpful but that's I sort of where i landed the... which uh, I... build worker ever uh, can you repeat okay. that? You, At you, least Zoom you... is telling. You are frozen again, Richard. No. You, sh you should stop uploading the range. Give me one, <laughs> Give me one second. All right. I maybe am returning to you all. Hey, you guys there? Yep. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Um, uh, so build worker, does anybody else use that term to mean what we're talking about build step here? That was my main beef. I don't think any of us, Blake also, I think agreed that nobody uses that word. Uh, which, which word, sorry? Build worker. You got things in your life that you, you refer to as build workers and people would know what you're talking about. Um, I mean, at, at my last place, we, we definitely did use them as, as build workers and, and we made them distinct from um, so I, I guess the thing is like when I think about like a, a build node or whatever, mm -hmm. the, the, the reason why I kind of think about um, the infrastructure very specifically there is when securing a build step, the idea should be that you are also the infrastructure and I'm going to use that in quotes, it could be a container, um, the infrastructure that you are using to run the build should ostensibly be single use, right? You know, you don't you, pretty much you want to ensure that 
especially if if the build is going to be doing something like arbitrary code, as in like a compilation step, right? A compilation step, it's very hard to actually know what's actually happening there. And so you want to say, hey, assume that the compilation step could have compromised that build worker. And so if you assume that that build worker is potentially compromised, you throw that out. And that allows you to then say, you know, you can always go back, do your scans, do all the additional work to say, yes, we're, we're certain that um, that build worker did all the right things. Um, that's the way I've always used it is, is in that sort of context. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is what, I mean, that's what we're getting. That's what Alex was saying with the distinction, right? Is that um, it's the... Yeah, the step is the abstract task, right? It's it's do the compilation, it's run these tests, it's right. whatever the task is that we're trying to accomplish, and the worker is the infrastructure that's performing the task. Yeah, but if the, we're if we're treating those workers as disposable, and each one of them is only completing one step, then they sort of have a have a we've sort of collapsed the distinction a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So th my only suggestion would just be to make sure that that's clear. Is just to say, hey, look, um, we are making some assumptions like any sort of um, step that is doing something sensitive or doing something that could be is hard to predict, right? Like, you know, it's one thing to say, hey, we're running a linting step. A linting step, you probably don't need to worry about throwing out the infrastructure afterwards. But if you do a compilation or if you're so particularly packaging something. The question I have, is it confusing to bring up both? Because to me, I'm worried it is. I'm worried we're going to confuse the reader where they're going to not know what a build worker is or not know what a build step is. Well, I, I guess the thing that, that I would ask is like, so if I'm using you know Jenkins, right? And I'm running my CI CD, there's a bunch of Jenkins workers that do different things, right? Mm -hmm. You know, some of the Jenkins workers, oh, here's a Windows Jenkins worker that will compile my stuff on Windows. Here's, but you know, and so I think in those cases, like I, I do view those as different from the pipeline steps, right? Like the pipeline steps are saying what should happen. And then the, the <sighs> Jenkins workers are where those things are actually happening. Right, 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 right. Uh, and and Th there could be a way to make it easier and more, you know, uh, straightforward about what that means. Um, cause I, I also think that the, the, there's another reason why they're distinct is I should be able to run a non-secure build locally on my machine, right? Those build steps will run on my machine. It'll run linting. It'll run a compilation step and I can, you know, get my art, you know, I can get a artifact that I can test locally, but that's going to be very different than the secure build worker right, which is where the, the build steps would run in a secure, you know, way. Yeah, and, and... <laughs> that throws a wrench into everything, Alex. That's like saying we need to have both terminologies and be specific in which ones we use, uh, but we're not throughout the paper. Uh, that's, that's, that's yeah, that's so, I, and I try to, when, as I was going through it and sort of revising things, I was trying to sort of make a distinction between like, you know, so for example, in the, in the sample pipeline section where we have the orchestrator says, all right, here's the next step. And then that step is executed on X worker, right? And, and you know, that, that there's a worker assigned to that step and then it gets executed. So I, I'm trying to sort of nuance that distinction a little bit in the way that I, I did some of the reviewing, but um, uh, or the, re the revisions, but yes, I think there probably needs to be some more, um, more work done on that would be my guess. So just going back to that definition real quick, Michael, build steps and workers take as inputs a golden image. True or false? So uh, I would say the build worker does, not necessarily that, well, Okay, so th this is once again, yeah. Th there's a lot of uh, ways to to to. So I, I would take okay. Let's take a step back for just a second. Um, when I think about the build, I think about it in in two separate ways. One is like, hey, the build is a set of steps that can run anywhere. 
Sure. Then there is a canonical build or whatever you want to call it. The this is the official build that we feel is secure, that we feel is 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 we is something that would somebody would sign off on. And the reason why I make that as a big distinction is there's like there's literal like money dollar, you know, there, there's money associated with it, there's times associated with it and whatnot, where if I have a secure build, often I'm doing additional scans, I'm running it on secure infrastructure that has a cost associated with it. If I'm compiling something locally just to test out the functionality, like it doesn't, you know, uh, it doesn't matter, right? Like it doesn't matter if it's a little, you know, not exactly following what we would in in a secure build. Um, but we can't we can't detail those edge cases because you're, you're yeah. you know, that's not it's not definable really. Yeah. Well. So yes. Yes. I I I, I agree with that. But I I think that there still is. Um. I think what you could say is if you were defining the build here, the build steps and the workers purely in terms of a secure build and just say, we are not like specifically call out, like we are not um, putting anything in here about running this build, you know, uh, on anything other than like a secure build. Uh, I'm sure. trying to think of a word for it, like a developer <laughs> build or, you know, a non-secure build, you know, anything that would be, um, you know, the, the idea here just being that the build steps and workers here as defined should only be considered in terms of, you know, this is an artifact that should be signed off on, you know, and so on. Would it be helpful to explicitly write out build steps and workers are distinct concepts. Workers generally refer to the compute resources, but steps refer to the, the, I don't want to say philosophical, the the concept as a whole. Um, it, within this paper, we will uh, and and based upon your implementation, they could be one of the same. Uh, is that worth just spelling out, uh, or is that that going to cause even more confusion? Um, and then and then what's great is that we can, if we if we do that, and we mentioned specifically that within the paper. You know, uh, we we expect that they might be one of the same. We don't then have to say for every single sentence, build steps and workers. I'm worried about having it always specified, the breaking it down a little bit. Alex, is that? Yeah. So I think so. So this maybe touches a little bit on one of the quest other questions that I had as I was reviewing this, which is, like. In my head, so this is this is coming from CNCF as a, as a document. I assume that we are we are leaning into this being recommendations for a cloud native supply chain. Um, and in my head, like one of the things that that make that is a distinguishing factor of that is that we're principally talking about um, processes that are running as containers or microservices or something in that sort of an architecture, right? And so I wonder. So that so that's part of where what got me to where I was on this you know uh, on this connection between steps and workers is um, is that sort of containerized architecture um, yeah. is I'm I'm assuming you know containers are a lot more um, a lot more disposable than if you've got a server running in your basement right um, and and so so that's that's part of where I got to where I was. Um, and I'm trying to tie this back. Sorry, I lost my train of thought a little All bit. Right. I'm trying to tie this back to your to your original question. Um, I think that um, so so I'm wondering, you know, if we're if we're laying out here's the distinction between those two things. Um, if we're assuming that this is a cloud native rec set of recommendations, um, like what does that mean for the for how we want to phrase that? If that makes sense. You know, it's funny. I, I think you and Michael are actually agreeing on the exact same thing. <laughs> I think you guys are saying exactly the same. Um, and and, and I, I realize here that you you just spelled out what you you mean. Um, and it covers us to have both have this sentence and then also refer to both of them here, because um, just in case somebody isn't coming to this with that whole worker and containerized build environment in mind, this covers them too. Uh, is is this going to be the? I don't personally. I don't think this one point of contention is going to ruin the paper. I don't. I don't think we're at an existential worry. I think we're probably, if anything, bike shedding a little bit on this. I think we covered it by your sentence that you just put in there. 
uh, Alex, I know I, I, I was, didn't like the addition of another sentence, but I think it does actually give that preface that you need to then read this okay. Um, I'm, I'm worried based upon how much Blake wrote here and uh, what his response to you was in that thread that this might not be the end of this conversation. I'm gonna leave this comment in here for now. If somebody feels incredibly strong about it, let's come back to the, the conversation. Um, I did like your comment here. Hardened OCI container, let us let me just read this out so that everybody in the call can hear it. A hardened OCI container may descend from scratch, such as empty root file system suitable for statically, that's not a great sentence, uh, for statically linked binaries. Distro lists such as scratch with locale and public certificates or an organization's managed minimal base image, such as Red Hat TBI with additional public keys or internal configuration. Um, what is that saying? Uh, <laughs> I, I think, yeah, so I think there is one aspect is missing there. Like, uh, there is also a pattern where scratch based images are using like a sidecar approach, like, a, you know, expertly handling TLS and certificate as offloaded to sidecar. So, I think what I understood, what I understood is uh, if, if, you, if you, the scratch option is available, then a UBI minimal base image is another option. But I think Scratch plus Sidecar is also a good alternative to but, UPI base image, right? So yeah, it doesn't it doesn't all? I mean, I, I actually think you could take out this entire middle section here. I mean, I uh, because the distro list such as Scratch with local uh, locale and public certificates doesn't actually provide any. I mean, that's just saying scratch with your own stuff put on it. You're still saying scratch. Uh, it doesn't, it, the whole goal of this paragraph seems to be use a scratch image as your base, right? That's the, that's all it's saying. Um, so providing like six options about, or, or, or expanding on that by saying that you can put your, put public certificates and locale information on it doesn't help. Can we just call it a minimal image and, and be done with it? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm good with minimal image. Um, so uh, I'm not even going to turn on suggesting by the way I don't know who owns this document um, but anonymous people can still come in and edit I know that because I stupidly didn't sign in because Gmail doesn't hand or Google doesn't handle um, can we turn off anonymous edits this is the same thing Richard I was asking <laughs> last time like to disable the editing right like I think Do I have the ability to turn off I, I think I John Meadows it. owns it. I'll bother him. Uh, yeah, no, I guess I can't share it, can I? That's not going to actually do anything. Yep. Okay. I'll bother John. I'll see if he can if he can edit it. Um, That'd be nice. Yeah, it'd be. It, uh, I'll 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 get him the information. But okay, so for rewriting this particular uh, quite long sentence. Um, May is also the wrong word here. <laughs> uh, I mean, um, should let's let's start with we're back to recommending. We're not. It doesn't just happen by chance that it descends. Um, a hardened OCI container should descend from. I, I think the double quote scratch. That's like uh, from. Should we say minimal, minimal images? Yeah. Uh, yeah, scratch is a minimal image, right? So right, right. <laughs> Otherwise, we gotta do. Oh, do you want to use Google's minimal image, Reddit's yeah. minimal image? I don't want to talk about that. Nope, <laughs> nope. Uh, uh, and then, do we want to keep in this or an organization's managed minimal image, minimal base image, such as Red Hat TBI? Do we need to to include this? You probably should say organizational minimal image, and then take out the Red Hat stuff. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a, that's probably duplicate language. Yeah, because right? it just minimal says image, your minimal image. Yeah, uh, so I mean, someone's got to own it, right? Um, I think we cover, you know, um, attesting to what is in that image other places in the paper. Yes. Um, Should we put it in brackets, some examples, so people who read the uh, 
uh, at least some actionable things right like they know i mean we don't want to confuse people also at the same time right like a, what is a minimal image everything is classified as a minimal image like ubi google, google container minimal image i bet you find <laughs> out also they will get it later on in the the paper um yeah okay i, I mean we do we do we say such as scratch images uh, we could prob- yeah, we could probably define what a minimal image is in the glossary and they say minimal image is defined as scratch, UBI, uh, whatever Google, the one that Google has or similar um, artifact. Got it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Define minimal image in glossary. Sweet. Bingo. All right, cool. Whew. Additionally, tools such as Open SCAP. Goss, what is Blake? Man, Blake. Blake wrote another paragraph in the comment about the paragraph. Um, there should actually be shared. Not a paragraph. It's like so many paragraphs. <laughs> uh, elsewhere in the document, concerning application testing to application testing and image scanning. Oh. Um, All right. Uh, is that some files? I don't actually. To be honest, this 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 first sentence to me used to validate the removal of potentially sensitive files or configurations in the container at build time. What does that mean? Validate the removal of potentially sensitive files this is very. I mean that that that. What does that mean? Does anybody have a a, a sense? Secrets, secret sanitation, maybe that they're, that they're removed. Or that My they're guess removed? is that this is referring to something like a Docker Slim sort of situation. Yeah. Well, it, I mean the the tools themselves look at the right exactly, it, it, Alex. It, it I guess it verifies that you are using a minimal image, or you're using an image with. Uh, yeah, I think by potentially sensitive files and configurations, it means you know uh, it has something running on it that you didn't want running in your environment. That's the that's the question, right? Or that's what this is this is saying. You can use tools to validate the actual container images you're running to make sure that you are you you're not running, I don't know, uh, NTP or 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 something that's gonna nothing to do with things, yeah. Yeah, something ex- mm. exposed. Um, but I don't think that sentence says that eloquently or, or even concisely. Um, can, we, can we collapse this whole paragraph into one sentence added to the paragraph above it that just says, you know, your ba- you should then validate your base image with tools that ensure that there's nothing else running in it that you didn't plan on running in it. Uh, yeah. That's not very well said, but, you know, something to that effect. Yeah, I, I think I we think should use the term verify. Oh, sorry. The note. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I, I think we shouldn't use base image because it can be the final image also, right? So people can run open cap against the final image. So uh is open cap our premium tool that we'd recommend here? Which if if I only had to list one. Which one would it be? It'd probably SCAP. It's it's the miter okay. tool. Additionally, tools such as Open SCAP should be used to validate that uh, an image is truly minimal. Uh, uh, that a uh, image contents meets organizational policy. Image contents meet organizational policy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that an image's contents. Let's let's be. Meet organizational policy and security best practices. Minimalism. I don't know. That does that does that Alex. Back to your point, does that say what you what was supposed to be said here? 
Yeah, I, I think it, there is a value adding and a security best practice because many organizations may not have a image policies. Like, you know, it, it is an interesting thing, right? Like, so. Yeah, I can type, I swear, folks. Uh, that. Yes. That's Cole, good. you offended by or security best practice? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I was distracted no, it's all right. for a second. Uh, right. No, it looks good to me. Alex, rip this out. Yep, sounds good to me. Also, oh, I love deleting language. It's almost as fun as deleting code. I feel like a, I'm, I'm controlling a wrecking ball. All right. Um, <laughs> let's look at this little sentence. Uh, runtime hardening should be provided by the underlying orchestration platform protections may include policies like setcom, app armor, SU. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, okay, there's something with this. Uh, something with this sentence is off. Protections may include policies like setcom, app armor, and SE Linux. Network isolation and build artifact validation. He is listing within a list, and that makes it a list inception, which violates one of the Geneva Conventions. I always forget which one. Um, what is this saying? Should be provided by the underlying orchestration platform. So I agree with the general, like what that first um, sentences, like the, the idea there being that, you know, the orchestration platform, I assume being something like sure. Kubernetes, uh -huh. right. But I agree that the, the second sentence, uh, I'm not exactly sure, like protections may include policies, like, and then it's certain yeah. things that are policies, certain things that aren't policies. Right, 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 right. This is, this is. Um, do we even need to say this? Does, 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 is it valuable to have this in there? I mean, uh, uh, back to you, Michael. Is it actionable to say that, that runtime hardening should be done by the orchestration platform? Would that be news to anybody? Or not? No, I think there is a value there, but I think to get a proper value, I think that that need to be another big paragraph. Like uh, it, right. it's so many things out there, and it's not giving a clear guidance. Like it's just putting some names or policies, but right. it, it it is a bit over complicating, like right, in my view. So we we talk about. I know we talk about network. We we definitely have an entire section on these two. So this is covered. Yeah. Um, I don't know about SecComp, App Armor, SC Linux. I don't recall that being in another part of the um, of the paper. Anybody? No. But I, I think just I think you're right, but not. It feels wrong to just dangle it there. Yeah. Like nobody wants to work with SC Linux. Uh, <laughs> where where do we real. talk about uh, where do we talk about locking down the uh, the build worker, right? Maybe that should be long there. That's where uh, we, we should be doing SC Linux policies when we're talking about locking it down. This is the build worker environment. Let's see if, if I can get it from one of our, it's not securing artifacts. It's not securing. I feel like we're we're missing the the actual title here somehow. This isn't in securing. We we're missing. Uh, this is at the wrong level. Somebody changed this. Uh, this should be heading one. There you go. Okay, sorry, uh, driving me nuts. Uh, let's see. Cryptographically guaranteed policy adherence. Validate build artifacts, validate environment dependencies before usage. Would that be what we're where you would talk about runtime? Yeah, I think Security. so. This this goes right into mitigating the solar winds, right? This is the only thing that would mitigate it is locking down those those syscalls. 
Uh, that does not seem to be the case there. Yeah. Um. Oh, this is this is this is a big, this is a quite a big paragraph. Validate environments. This has got to be it. Yep, 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 yep. There it is. But it does. This would usually would include things like validating git commit hashes and checking. Hmm. Uh. Do we need to create a new recommendation around um, <clears throat> runtime security? Mm -hmm. I think so. I mean, I think as well that that seems to be something completely missing. All right. Um, if you throw the heading in there, I'll I'll start working on that. Yeah. So how about this? I'll just basically be a copy of this. Validate runtime security of build workers. Mm -hmm. Not just build workers, right? So it's a build. build what was that? No, no, I was saying the the runtime is also for the final application container, right? Like you don't want the the application container. Yeah. But that would be handled down here in securing deployments. Okay. Right? Yeah. I mean, like this is, we're still talking about the build worker at this point. Okay. Um, and, and, and I think that's what that original sentence that we were just angry at was saying as well. Um, let's leave that. We don't need Like uh, we want to, we want to enforce the policy on the build workers, right? So the, the machine will have that SE Linux policy and then we want to, the container should you know, meet that policy, but we needed wow, that really? other auto band verification that, hey, we're not we're not executing stuff we shouldn't be. I think cool. is how I'm try, gonna try to go at after that. Uh, here, I'm just gonna, yeah, I, I, I think you're right. Based upon, can I just delete the other sentence? Or the other, or should I copy that, that paragraph down? You can copy it in there, I'll probably rewrite it, but I'll use that okay. as a reference and grab some of that language in there. Previous paragraph introduction. Boom. Anonymous Neon Cat. Let's go back here. I'm just going to paste it under here just so you have the reference, including the comments. Okay. Thank you, Cole, for... Um, do we reference immutable and potentially ephemeral pipelines? I see the word immutable bolded. Should I unbold that, by the way? Nothing else in the paper is bolded. And I would have bolded everything if I knew that we could bold. Um, Maybe this happened when tried to come and accidentally board the game. Okay. Oh, I will. The orchestrator stands up an immutable pipeline leveraging infrastructure as code. Cool. You, we referenced immutability, uh, ephemerality, uh, several needed components of the supply chain over the orchestrator. Hmm. Anybody feel strongly about the fact that it doesn't specify any anything about ephemeral pipelines? Yeah, I, I don't know what it means by ephemeral. Uh, what what uh, what we mean by ephemeral pipelines? I'm what assuming John... what he means is that the build workers are ephemeral; that they 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 die after they yeah. they they do their run. That's got to be what he means. Oh. Yeah, but that's. I think you're. I think you're bringing up a good point, Michael. That why would we specify that here? Oh, <laughs> and well, we yeah, do. Yeah. We do talk about that. I believe just above. Oh, so yeah, so actually, one of the things I was, I was, 
Yeah, and and one of the things I was actually concerned by, I was actually actually confused by what what was meant there because ephemeral, like uh, if I was actually curious if the if the pipeline itself was ephemeral, uh -oh. as in based on some sort of logic, it would figure out, oh, I should be running this pipeline, and actually we want to sort of recommend against necessarily that sort of thing because we want to make sure that the pipelines are very clearly defined and we don't want to actually have a i, I would at least think we don't want to actually have a lot of logic in how we um I, I guess the thing there is like you know the the pipeline when i think about it um should not have like the logic should be very straightforward and simple to say oh the pipeline says you should be building this thing or be doing this thing the pipeline should not be saying well, based on a bunch of logic and heuristics and whatever, uh, it should be running this random thing. Um, hmm. I, I want to make sure that, and I, that was where I was just a little confused by, but I think, yeah, so uh, maybe I'm still confused by what is meant by ephemeral in, in that case. I, uh, well, and it's funny because he, as you just saw, he does, uh, no, ephemeral. Uh, credentials is fine. Creation of multiple ephemeral and uh, ephemeral and immutable pipelines. So yet again, he is using this term of ephemeral pipelines. Um, but I still, I still wonder if you can. Ex I mean, pipelines are. Uh, uh, it's normally a defined set of courts and step right like it's not really ephemeral like yeah. it, it, the orchestration part maybe that the containers <laughs> that are built as part of the pipeline that should be ephemeral like definitely should, yeah but, but I would you pipeline, say that the pipeline is ephemeral if all of its containers that are part of it but not are ephemeral well 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 hold on like i i think the thing there that that the way i i would argue is right you know um the pipeline, if I'm, if I have a pipeline, right. I, and I'm thinking of the, so I guess the way I'm thinking about it is, is the pipeline is essentially, you know, a set of code that tells the ephemeral workers what they should be doing. Right. Um, and if you were to say the pipeline itself is ephemeral, I'm thinking that code is ephemeral as in that code is short lived or perhaps generated by some other process. And um, I, maybe it's a it's a pedantic sort of argument, but but that that's the way I I, I sort of read that. But that's not and, and, and okay. So going back to that, Michael, uh, do you feel strongly about that? Like that's to me, I'm like, no, that's not important. The ephemerality yeah, no. of that actual pipeline, no, screw that. That's not worth. It. If yeah, yeah. You do no, that's no, an organization. It, awesome, but otherwise, yeah, no, it's it's not a a, a huge. Yeah. Thing for me. Okay, so are we are we offended by it being left here or no? Do you think that's confusing? I think we can remove it, right? So don't yeah, we any... could we could do we could do multiple comma immutable pipelines. Or I guess no comma, that's bad English. Um, let's do that because that, otherwise it's confusing. Or we can yeah. say yeah. No, uh, pipeline workers instead of pipeline, right? So that is another option. Right. Oh. No, let's not bring up the word workers any more than we have to. Uh, but I, I think uh, let's see, build infrastructure. We were done here. I think I think it still makes sense. Yes, we we bought and brought it up, John. Thanks, John. Um, yeah, thanks, Cole. That's looking good already. Look at you. Yeah, I think I like it right there. Let me know if uh, that meets the intent there. Sure. Let me just it's drive me nuts. Oh, I know. I'm horrible at spelling. That's all right. I'm... Uh, all right. Out of band ver verification of execution policy with tools such as out of band verification of like execution policy. Uh, what's execution policy? If I'm a, if I'm a Mm -hmm. If you had to break that down to a five-year-old, what would we, what would we call that? Or three-year-old. 
Yeah, single syllables, please. Um, yeah, seeing if we got any prior work here. Policy rules, rule sets should be created and applied to build infrastructure. Yeah, I'm trying to, because I see a lot of like SE Linux policy or App Armor policy. So sure. I'm trying to abstract that out. Uh, how about this? Out of band verification of runtime environment security as defined by execution policy with tools such as, does that clear it up yeah. a little bit? Yeah, yeah, that adds the clarity I think it needs. Runtime environment security as defined by execution policies with tools such as SecComp. That, that I can read and I can be like, okay, there are execution policies that come from SecComp, AppArmor, SE Linux that nobody ever wants to deal with because it's boring uh, that help uh, verify the runtime environment security. That is, that that makes, I can see what the importance is there. Policy rule sets should be created and applied to build infrastructure, cool. Uh, high privilege kernel capabilities such as debugger attachments should be restricted and monitored. Yeah, findings should be forwarded to organizational security and incident uh, systems for remediation. Oh, I thought you were gonna say teams. I was like, I don't wanna send it to them. They're not gonna do anything. Um, all right. I, I think this is, I, anybody? Yeah, no, Alex, you gonna go, uh, go through it like an hour from now and be like, nah, destroy this paragraph. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna click check. Thanks a bunch, Cole. That was a quick turnaround there. Um, next one. We should also suggest pinning the, uh, yeah, dependency pinning. Who wants to take that? <laughs> uh, I got the last one. <laughs> I, I am. Um, I mean, I, so I, I read that comment. Also, I actually, actually like just there might have been something in here about dependency pinning a little bit later on, but maybe I just made that up in my head. Well, let's let's use our friend Control F. Nope. <laughs> At least they didn't use the word pin. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, they didn't use the word pin. Um. Uh, actually, uh, now I of course lost it. This is story of my life with this paper. Um. I did have a question about this, uh, mainly on no, oh, what did I just completely lose it? There it is. Um, first off, this recommendation to remove or verify external requirements from the build process. Doesn't that seem like conflicting advice? Do you either want to remove it or verify it? So uh, verify, cool, that makes sense. Remove, that's really actionable and I better see concrete examples about what I remove. Anybody have a... Good example or a good, good like... I mean, external source of resources can change or disappear unexpectedly. Third-party packages that are, are a part of your build process can be vendored. If it is not feasible or possible to do so, recording hashes of any remote data. I think we should. Uh, I mean, this has to be verified. You can't say remove. We're not telling people how to remove external sources. If you have external requirements, they're there already. Just verify that they exist. I think basically, like for each requirement, you should either verify that exists or remove it if it doesn't, right? Can we just say, uh, Marina, on that note, if we if we change it to just verify, can we have like one quick little zinger at the end? Like yeah, that, that sounds says, fine. If you are unable to verify the, 
an external requirement, you should remove that requirement. <laughs> but, Perfect. <laughs> so, I'll go, but, go tell my CTO that or CEO that. Just yeah. remove the requirement. Just remove it's it. Good. Yeah. Don't worry. You didn't need the requests library anyway. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, but not. Did I just did I just trigger you? No, you know, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Benan's job to verify. <laughs> Go ahead, Benan. What's up? No, I think reading that it is kind of a not uh, same across all the lang programming languages. So I don't know what is external sources. If artifact itself is an external source, a yeah, build wow. server. It is an external source, right? So vendoring, I don't know what is the practicality of vendoring in all programming languages, right? So uh, in my view, it should be like uh, the dependency should be free in the frozen before before the build time, like uh, yeah. not to put like in, you know, like NPM or Python greater than or less than or something like that. And um, getting a version during the build time. So instead of that, um, explicitly mention the version number so that uh, there is a consistency during the build on each time rather than uh, each build it may have different behavior because the artifact may have a new version for that package and uh, they will get a new version next time right so vendoring i don't know how practical it is even golang moved from vendor to go module right so uh, i don't know it is a bit complicated area in I, my I hear view. what you're saying and i believe in the paper we do recommend uh storing all the artifacts yourself right so not pulling from is it an external source or is it an external requirement I mean, if you're pulling it from your own artifactory artifact itself is mirroring from external like maven central or pypy sure. central right so artifact is an internal clone for external artifacts, right? So it is, but even the artifact itself is outside a build system. It's not a part of a Jenkins sure. pipeline of build process. But I, I, I mean, in my opinion, we are over complicating this sentence or, okay. um, you know, it is more like a, what John, the pinning dependencies is the main thing here, right? We need to freeze the dependencies. We shouldn't, we should be able to reproduce it every time we build it, right? So we, no one should, mentioned greater than less than this version or something like that. there should be a specific explicit version number which should be same across all the bills right so that's my view instead of highlighting vendoring vendoring may not this, be practical is yeah. this too generic then this is this is all just too much generic advice you're basically saying the recommendation should be here pin your version your external requirements and verify those external requirements are what you get during the build Yes, I mean that. That's what I instead of vendoring. That's what I've yeah lock in with yeah. Yeah. Uh, can we get a second to that motion? I'm 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 I'm. I'm okay with that. Uh, I don't know if that is a moderate to high risk in categories. I, I mean, that might be high. No, uh, if you it read changes the, it a little bit. Yeah, it a bit confusing different lines. So the first one is a reaching out to external sources at build time. That's fine, but uh, is an internal artifact is an external source? Maybe, may not be, but even artifactory. You know, sometimes if it is not in the artifact, it will try to pull it from the external, like Maven Central and things like that. But you know, th there can be always that challenge. External resources can change and disappear. But you know, if it is an already fetched artifact, it should be in the local artifact, right? So sure, uh, yeah, there will be a cache. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the question is, what is the actual rec recommendation to somebody about? uh reproducible builds and and pulling down external requirements is it that you pin the version and get the same exact external source every single time verifying it via uh the the hash of it or whatnot um yeah. is that the recommendation i don't think we can recommend that we're not there yet so i think we can say this is what we should do but because we can't do that, the community isn't there yet. You know, yeah. we, we you should 
incorporate um, that into your risk assessment of the software. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of with Cole in the sense that that's great advice, but it's not feasible probably for most organizations. Yeah. So we just say, hey, assess the risk of this. If there's a bunch of stuff you don't know about it, don't give it root level access in your system, right? Okay. Yeah, I like that. Um, to Vinod's point, uh, ideally pinning specific versions of external requirements increases now nah, i don't i mean we can't start with you know let's take out ideally the the entire page or paper is one big ideally sentence uh, pinning specific versions of, uh, of external requirements increases uh, the consistency and ability to verify build assets through a uh, throughout a software throughout software Look at that. I just gave the project a life cycle. Uh, do, if, if we do include this, I mean, since we're including this, do we also want to make a recommendation about, uh, specifically here about keeping, you know, the pinned versions up to date as things change in the external resources? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's funny, uh, Adita, I mean, at that, shouldn't you, wouldn't you get like a, um, Presumably your scanning tools would yeah. would tell you, right? They'd be like, well. Yeah, it might contradict with uh, what we are pinning, right? So if, if you are saying up to date, most pro people will use latest tag or without explicit version, which will again, the control will be yeah. outside, right? So you don't know what version you are exactly getting during the build because there will be a new version in the artifactory. So the checksums and everything is different. So ideally you know the version should be pinned and the tools additional tools should be used to get get updates about info like dependent about or similar tools should be there to help you with the regular yeah. updates yeah, yeah. I, I, I was I, thinking along the lines of depend about or renovate bot uh, and so on rather than pinning to a latest tag yeah but yeah. it still it still means that even if you are using dependent bot or renovate bot, you still should pin to that one version. I don't see why you never. Necessarily, you know. uh, sorry. Can you repeat the reject? Sorry. Uh, I mean, if you're if you're using even if you're using dependent bot or renovate bot, you, the the recommendation to pin, uh, it still exists. You should still should pin to that existing version. Yeah, so it that is. You know your builds can always build. There is a challenge with the pinning, right? So mostly developers, once they, once they explicitly mention a version, they don't change it. They don't update it that frequently, right? Like, so that's one of the reason, like some people use latest or don't mention the actual version. So, you know, using pinning can introduce this problem of not, not frequently get updated the software, right? So I, I think it's a good idea to recommend them depend about or renovate but along the same that uh, to avoid any you know legacy versions uh, use tools like depend about to get a regular update versions right so so they can people can even though they explicitly mention the version in their form file or requirements sure. or TSP, they will get alerted about new version they can update it to yeah. you know updating is also security piece right like if people don't update it sure now, I, yeah. I just think that that should be a different a, a different recommendation, right? It is, but it, this is a side effect of pinning, right? Like if you pin an explicit version, you may kind of stick with that version forever. I mean, yeah, but you should also have a system like Dependabot or Renovate Bot that, you know, even if I pin, if I create an open source project today and I pin a specific uh, version of a Python package, Dependabot is still going to yell at me. Yeah, it, it does. Yeah, that that's a good thing. But if Dependa was bought was not there, like like many other companies, uh, like Bitbucket or a GitLab type of uh, you know repository, 
they just keep that old version forever right so they can use renovate bot in that case I mean, to avoid the problem yeah who would use bitbucket uh um uh, yeah i i agree i agree um does that need to be uh does that need to be one extra sentence keep in mind that's with what pinning, I was thinking. keep in mind with when you pin specific versions you run the risk of not getting the updated version of not using the updated version of a package later though i'm yet again i feel like that's uh, I'm, I'm sorry guys i know we reached the top of the hour um uh yeah, i support aditya in that one <laughs> so it's good to add that line in my opinion richard yeah but throw it in there can i can i put that on you either vinata or aditya throw yeah makes sense yeah sure just just like a quick one uh no, nothing nothing too long um uh so uh i know we're over if anybody can continue going through look at the comments uh if it's not something that you feel confident overwriting add a comment in um and 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 fuel the fire i mean i think our goal right now should be to clear out all of these points of contention and then um i mean that that should be don't even go and read it first let's let's actually knock out all these pieces because we can always add more comments in the next round of edits but this is getting significantly more coherent getting closer to the point of being able to just read it top to bottom um and yeah uh, uh seriously anything over the weekend I, I i wouldn't mind next week putting in a little bit of time to do this again i think these this is this is useful to just have very straightforward pushing through so um thank you all for coming have a great rest of your your weekend um look forward to finishing this out Sure. Adios. Bye. Have a good weekend, guys. Thanks. Thanks.